A good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Denerd Human, and welcome to the special Games Guide edition of Total War. Where today we will look at how you can edit the game files to really just muck around with all the units, from things like their attack and their defence to things like their upkeep cost. So if you want to do a little bit of basic modding and get yourself started with it, then I think this is a good place for you to do that. We're really just going to look at one specific file today and see how we can make that work for us. Now, I say Total War rather than Rome Total War, which is obviously what's on the screen now, because this video will be relevant for Rome Total War, Barbarian Invasion, and for Medieval 2. So the file we'll look at will be in the data file for all three of those games. Once inside your Steam library, it's very simple to find your way to Rome Total War, and we want to go inside the data folder. Now down the bottom of the folder there is a little unit called export underscore desk underscore unit. That's the one we'll be looking in depth at today. When you open this up, you might be a little bit daunted by the sheer amount of information that's being thrown at you. And indeed, it does have every single unit in the game. So all of these numbers and words here can be a little bit daunting. Indeed, there's no reason when you look at this, you should know that this number here refers to the upkeep cost that if I wanted to, I could simply change to zero. No, but it does actually do a good job of explaining it all up here. So if you do want to do anything particularly detailed with the editing of this file, you do have a good scroll through here. It's It might look a little bit daunting, but it is quite well explained. It is pretty clear. But I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go have a little look at an example. So let's have a look at the Roman town watch to start us off with. And we'll have a little edit of this and I'll show you what some of the key little stats are. Let's get straight to the upkeep then, because this digit down here, the third one in stat cost, is actually the upkeep of the unit. Let's say we want that to be zero. Maybe in Medieval 2, you like how all the militia units get free upkeep in the cities. Let's do that. Maybe let's fiddle with some of the others too. Let's just go across here from left to right, shall we? So number one is how many turns it takes to recruit it. Most units are obviously one turn. This is how much it costs to recruit it, so 150 denarii. Maybe we'll just tone that down to 100. We already said this is the upkeep. These ones are slightly less interesting, really. It's just about upgrading weapons and the cost to upgrade the armor, and this is simply the cost in custom battle. Now, there are some other things you might want to have a little look at, too. So we just go back up to the top for now. Town Watch, this is the name we see in the game here, but Roman Town City Militia is actually the way it's referred to internally. See, there are some slight differences, just something for you to bear in mind. Some of it's fairly obvious. Things like infantry, it technically counts as a light infantry unit. And indeed, if we go over here, we can see stat underscore pry, stat underscore pry attributes will tell us all about its weapon. So three is its attack power. Now, maybe we want some lovely, powerful town militia. Let's turn that up to 10, shall we? So hopefully, then we'll be able to have a nice, powerful town militia to play our game with. That'll be marvelous. So you will find here it's quite simple for this because it's got 10 for its power of its attack. It's got one there as its charge bonus. It doesn't have any missile, so it's just got no there, zero and zero. That will be to do with the missile units. I'll tell you more about the missiles in a minute. In terms of the rest of it, it's just a melee weapon, it's a simple piercing spear, etc, etc. The rest of that is kind of nothing too interesting. For a simple infantry unit like this with no missile weapon, all you really care about is this, the attack power, and this bit over here, the charge bonus. Now you can head a bit further down to the stat pry armor here, and you will find this is your defensive stat. So this over here is your armor. Maybe you want some armor on him. Let's give him five for armor. This one over here, number two, is their defense skill. So we can turn that up. Maybe you've got three now. And this last one over here is their shield. We'll give him a little bit of a shield, six. Now flesh, flesh technically <laughs> refers to the sound the game makes when he gets hit because he's not supposed to have armor because we just gave him some he's not supposed to have armor so um it currently makes the flesh noise when you stab them see here the start if we scroll down it makes a metal sound because they actually have some armor anyway we've done a little bit of fiddling around and that gives you a bit of a basic insight so i'll just show you very quickly on the game that these things are being very quickly translated into the game itself I loaded up the Julii campaign then, you can see zero upkeep for our lovely town watch fellows. 
and it, indeed the defense and the attack are both taken on the changes that I made in the game files very very easy to do if you want to make those changes now obviously we've just made the town watch kind of pretty darn strong like actually better than your starty or at least almost anyway so you might not actually want to do all of that but it is it's a good demonstration of how easy it is to play around with these things in the game files certainly the upkeep for militia unit is something that I might actually do in the future when I play this game because I think that's a good little point there but what I do want to do is take you back because if I were to fiddle around with Hastati there's just a few slight differences because they have missiles as well so for missile units the files do work just slightly differently so we'll take you back and we'll just have a quick example of that too onto the Hastati then and much like the town watch above it it does have a slightly different internal name to the one that we see in the game. Just worth bearing that in mind in case you want to do any further editing inside the game files. But anyway, most of this is actually very, very similar. So the stat cost down here, for example, we have one turn to recruit them. 440 in terms of the recruitment cost. Let's just make that one, shall we? That'll be fun. Um, upkeep is 170. We'll make that zero once again. And indeed the armor is much the same you have yourself the armor defense skill and the shield but where it really changes is the standard score prime because for any unit that has a missile weapon it will class that as the primary weapon at least in terms of this page here so this 11 is not the attack of the Hastati, that's the attack of the pelum weapon of their javelin okay so if you want to change the power of the pelum let's just say you want to make that 20 let's just turn that up to 20 there this again will just refer to charge bonus. Let's not worry about that per se. Um, over here we have a range of the missile weapon 35. And then we have two for the amount of ammo. There's only two javelins when the Hastati have the peeler. So if we want to change the actual attack, it is this bit here, the stat sec. So seven is its normal attack. We're going to make that up to 15. So bear in mind, we've got 15 for its attack, 20 for its missile attack. This is the charge bonus, and then it says no for the ranged weapons because it is no longer worried about those. We've already discussed that up here on this slide. So I just wanted to give you this quick example of the Hastati as well because it is slightly different. Any unit, I'll just repeat, any unit that has a range, a range missile of any kind, that will be the primary weapon here, and then their melee weapon will be this stat. So just so you don't have any problems, trying to change the stats of your Hastati. So let's go back in the game and have a little look at this now. This time when I begin my Judii campaign, I have myself new Hastati, 15 melee attack, 20 missile attack, zero upkeep and one recruitment cost, which is slightly ludicrous, but it is quite fun, it must be said. So this time when I press recruit, just one denari every time in that bottom right hand corner there. That is magnificent. It really is that simple, ladies and gentlemen, though. Um, you can very easily get yourself all sorts of different units if that's what you want to do. Let's just try one more thing just to kind of highlight the lunacy you could create if you want to do this. Here we are then, the Carthaginian elephants. Now, as you can probably imagine, these are slightly different. They are actually technically heavy cavalry, which is interesting. Um, there are a few different things you might notice here. Things like they have the mounted effect that they, you know, have bonuses against different animals. Um, you know, they obviously can run a mock. Now, one thing we haven't actually necessarily looked at is this bit here, the stat health. So this is, number one refers to the human itself, the human on top of the elephant, has one hit point. The elephant has ten. I'm going to change that to two um, before we have a little bit of fun in a minute. Now, if we keep on going down, um, you might notice actually down here is the ownership part. These are Carthaginian elephants. They belong to the, uh, well, the faction of Carthage. You've probably seen that already, but thought I'd add a bit of clarity to that in case you weren't sure. A uh, quick example of that, the Numidian Cavalry can be recruited by both Numidia and the Saves of the Rebel faction. So just to make that clear in case you were a little bit unsure. To finish this off then, we're going to get our Roman Archers. They're kind of basic rubbish lads on the start of the game. So we have ourselves seven on attack. No, 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 no. Their primary obviously being their missile. Let's make that up to 30. Why not? You can see they've actually got a range of 120. We're having a little look actually at the auxilia here. Their range is 170. So quite significantly larger, almost 50% extra 
onto the range there. So if you want to actually have a really good idea of what the ranges are, then you know you can have a little look through here. It's surprising sometimes some of the things that you learn. Anyway, let's just save this up and we'll head back in and we'll have a bit of fun with these archers and elephants. Here are our great heroes then under the watchful tower. They probably should have climbed up into that if they were sensible, but there we are. I'm pretty certain then with their slightly lowered um, hit points and our slightly raised power, we're going to make short work of these elephants as they run in. Wouldn't really give these guys any chance normally. There we are, a couple down, three down on the first volley, and I'm pretty sure the rest will melt immediately from this next particular shot. Oh, they're melting. This is magnificent. Well, we, we do have to take out more elephants, lads. Um, so, this is uh, obviously what everyone should be doing with their time when they muck around on the game files. Just making elephants incredibly weak and watching them all topple over to some pathetic little Roman archers. So, as the arrows come in and they all melt to the ground, um, I think... I think we've kind of made our point somewhat, haven't we, lads? I think so. Down they go. And with that, the victory. <laughs> if you're going to edit these files on Medieval 2 Total War, a quick reminder that whilst it is still in data, the same file, the same file name, etc., you might need to unpack the file. Originally, it won't actually be accessible, so you need to use these application extensions with the unpacker tool that's inside your folders here. Um, I do have a separate video on how to unpack all those files and guide you on that if indeed you need it. That's all for now then ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed a little dabble into the game files. Now obviously I've done a few videos on making certain factions playable before but I haven't really done any videos quite like this where I've just looked at a specific file and how you can use that for some simple basic modding. And I think I'm going to do a few more of these in the future because there are quite a few files that are really useful if you just want to make a few simple changes when you want to do your own modding. So expect a few more like this in the near future, although of course I will continue with my little series on making unplayable factions playable. Um, but for now, I will leave you. I've been Thomas, this has been Tenerce the Human, and this has been a new little short game guide on how to mod. Thank you, and goodbye. By Jave, it is a marvellous, marvellous day, spiffing one would say. Any one for pimps. He has seen the light, he has joined the anarchy, he is cruel and cunning, and you know what, he likes a little drink, and I think that's marvellous. La 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 la, chop your way through the peasants. One shot! No!